Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about test analysis and design and today we are getting started with the new segment that is 4.5 collaboration based test approaches and here we'll be talking some of the important things from the agile methodology that how we can work together to identify the best test cases. To get started, of course, we are talking about the very first thing, which is collaborative user story writing. Of course, we understand that PO is someone who is responsible in agile methodology to write the user stories. However, we always call it out as collaborative user writing skill set or technique. The collaborative user story writing is all about putting every single stakeholder together in terms of discussing, gathering up and making sure that the stories which are being written by the PO, that is product owner, has everything in it from everyone's perspective. However, we can always review a story at the end after it has been written by the PO, but that is subjected to a small rework, right? But if we gather together, including business representative, the development team and the product owner together, we, will, we would result into writing a complete story at a time itself. And that's where we do consider these as one of the good techniques to be followed when it comes to agile methodologies in order to make our stories complete, getting it analyzed then and there, and also being more defect detection oriented. So let's see what exactly the content is trying to talk about when it comes to writing collaborative user story. A user story certainly represents a feature that will be valuable to either a user or purchaser of the system or software. User stories have three critical aspects called together as three C's concept. Now three C's here certainly stand for the card, conversation and confirmation. The card stands for the medium which describes a user story with all the information can be represented electronically on a digital board or can have a physical board reflected by a sticky note as a card. Also, the next one, conversation, which is conversation, explains how the software will be used, which is a description related to that particular story, that how are we trying to achieve these things or what is the exact expectation from the business on this particular note. And the third important thing is confirmation, which is a clear acceptance criteria. Now, if I just combine these three things together, when I say three C's, every single story is expected to have a visibility whenever we work in a team so that it should be represented with help of a card. That means there should be a physical or digital card available which talks about a particular work item in a significant independent piece of paper or piece of sheet or something like that, right? With every single one-liner story, thus comes the details of it, which is conversation. The conversation is more about what exactly is the details of a particular story, what is the expectation, what features, what functionality are we looking forward to have when it comes to a particular story. And the third important thing is that is when we come to the confirmation, which is the acceptance criteria. However, sometimes the user stories can be very, very detailed or can have a very broad expectations and outlines defined. But given that the set of acceptance criteria are written, we exactly know what is that we should achieve at the end of the day. As far as acceptance criteria are met, a story can be declared as completed. So sometimes the story can be very wide and people may have multiple perceptions towards it that what all should be implemented in order to get it completed. Now, given that acceptance criteria are written, it would confine us to the point and we will just be able to achieve the exact acceptance criteria and then we will be done with the story. Also to add here, we are also talking about the most common format of a user story which is followed worldwide is as a role, which is basically the user profile, for example, as a user, as a customer, as a bank teller or as a bank manager. So involving the persona in the user story will always give us a clarity that which user profile is trying to do that work. And maybe the permissions and accesses and a lot of other things would be automatically taken into account. So the format continues as, as a role that is user profile, I want that is goal to be accomplished. So whatever you want to do so that I can, that is the expected outcome, which is resulting business value for the role followed by the acceptance criteria. 
So in simple words, I can say this as the template basically reads it out as a story can be written in format that as a user, I want to be able to log in on an application so that I can check my emails. That's it. So now you have three, all the three parts that the user is trying to log in, right? And then the subject or what you want to do is log in into the application and the end outcome, which is expected result is, of course, I can check my emails. That means I should be able to see my emails after that. And of course, this one line summary sometime may not be very enough because login has to be elaborated that what kind of fields we will have from where will it be fetching the data and what kind of user ID and passwords are accepted and so on. So we will elaborate this in the description. And third thing, of course, is my acceptance criteria, which will determine that whether a registered user is able to log in or if we have any other you know, part of it, which is like a user can reset their password using forgot password link as a part of it, or they can just try three times to log in with invalid data. So all that part can be in the acceptance criteria, which will give us a clear picture that what is that should be considered as a completion of the story. Further to add here, of course, uh, collaborative authorship of the user story can use techniques such as brainstorming and mind mapping. The collaboration allows the team to obtain a shared vision of what should be delivered by taking into account three perspectives, that is business, development, and testing. A user story should always be written in a manner that it addresses everybody's expectation, that is including what the customer wants, second, how the team will implement it, that is development, and third, it has all the information and details required for the test engineer to perform the testing required for it. So a story should not be incomplete in any of these manner or any of these elements. It should be fulfilling everyone's need right from that single story. Also to add here, when good user stories should be written as, or when we talk about the good user stories as one of the example, these are to be following, following the invest technique. Now, what is invest technique? It stands for independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small and testable. If a stakeholder does not know how to test a user story, this may indicate that the user story is not clear enough or that is it does not reflect something valuable to them or the stakeholder just needs help in testing. So indeed, very important that every single user story has all the information related to testing, which guides a test engineer that how they can use the data, what kind of steps to be performed and what is the expected end goal of this story. At the same time, when we talk about the technique invest, we want to remind you that each story should be reviewed in order to call it as a good story. So of course, while reviewing, you check for the invest. The invest here says independent. That means every single story should be independent of other stories. Negotiable, which simply means that it should be negotiated in terms of like if th some things are not being achievable, then can I go ahead and do something alternatively for that? So negotiable, that means we can go ahead and discuss the scope of work on it. Then we talk about valuable. Every single story should add value to the overall project completion. That means there should be no such story which does not contribute to the success of product or completion of the product. That means that's not a story at all, right? Estimable, uh, the data should be written in such a way that the team can really understand the scope of work and estimate the stories while doing the sprint planning. And uh, S stands for a small, of course, small is the work has to be as simple as possible so that one person can take it up in a particular spread. And T certainly stands for testable. So it has to be testable too. So put together, when you review for these elements in a user story and make sure that user story complies with all these uh, elements of invest, then that's what you call it as a good user story. So put together that completely makes sense that how collaborative user story writing could be seen as a great technique to help organizations write better stories at the same time analyze them while they are writing together a lot of issues will be already resolved and at the same time we will be making sure that we are writing something which can be easily achieved without much of the conversation or much of the discussions or contradictions related to that so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.